Let's go to Benghazi on the coast of Libya, a place that almost every American has heard about now. What is Benghazi like today? Well, when we were there, the situation was very much in flux, and the forces of the eastern government in Libya were on the offensive, and they were pushing ISIS and other affiliated groups like Ansar al-Sharia out of the center and out of the outskirts even of the city, and it was full-on war. The interesting thing is that the group... Ansar al-Sharia was responsible for the killing of the U.S. ambassador there in 2012, and now we're uh, four years down the line, and they're still active there. And those are the groups that then became affiliated with ISIS, and now uh, the Libyan forces are having to deal with. And is there a division now between Ansar al-Sharia and ISIS? Have they melded into one anti-government force? They're pretty much allied, and uh, now that they've been more or less pushed out of Benghazi, it looks like in the last few days there's been an offensive that's been started uh, against the main ISIS stronghold in Sirte, but this time by the eastern government. And that's interesting, because the eastern government, uh, although uh, not allied with ISIS, they are Islamists, sort of in the Muslim Brotherhood brand. And they were pretty much for the last couple of years ignoring or not trying to engage in fighting with ISIS. And that's what we saw when we were there. So it's a big change to see them actually taking them on around CERT. Now, you spoke with General Khalifa Haftar. He's a general commander of the Eastern Army, the internationally recognized army that's doing a lot of the fighting. Give a listen. For ISIS, Libya is a strategic location. That's why they want to gain control over it. If they do control it, Egypt will be in trouble the east and west will be in trouble, they will be a threat to the rest of Africa. The door will be wide open. To who? To Europe. Now this is General Hofter making his case to governments in Europe and clearly to the United States for help. On the one hand. On the other hand, everybody we spoke with in Libya from the east, from the western part of the country, they wanted to take responsibility for what has happened in Libya themselves. What they are asking for is for the arms embargo in Libya to be lifted. So let's talk about the ask that the general and other Libyan fighters are asking for. Are American and European diplomats buying that plea that if you lift the arms embargo, if you just give us the weapons, we can manage this? Is there a chance the arms embargo gets lifted? What's the calculus from the point of view of the Americans and, and even the Western Europeans? I don't think the answer is to lift the arms embargo. I think the answer is for European and Americans to be much more engaged with politicians on both sides of the divide in Libya and to put a lot more pressure on them to form a genuine unity government. I just think that the Libyan agenda needs to be about more than Benghazi and about more than what happened there in 2012. It needs to be about what's happening in Libya today.